um, if you do know me, you can see it has got eight on Instagram. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so grateful for you. Um, today I wanted to talk about um, two messages um, very strongly about Shango as well as Oya. Um, if you are not familiar with the um, both of them being Orisha gods, um, both being very powerful, both being able to stand in their own individuality while also being able to bring a lot to the table. What I mean by that is that a lot of people actually don't know a lot about Shango outside of the way that he treated Oshun, right? But a lot of people don't understand that Oshun's path, she needed to go through um, the feelings of feeling, you know, um, you know, um, denial or um, self-esteem or having to go through coming into her power because sometimes people's path to become the perfect partner um, and I, when I say perfect partner, I mean the best to their ability. They have to go through the path alone. But when we look at Shango being a king, right, in his, in his most highest and most powerful qualities, he's not a king because he commands people's respect. He commands the room. He pushes people over. He, he you know, he's somebody who, um, who can, you know, um, basically walk all over people. It's not those negative qualities that make him a king. It's because he's of service to people who sometimes don't know how to be of service and get out of their own way. He can speak to the beggar as much as he can speak to the drug dealer, as much as he can speak to the Pope, right? Like there's an energy around him being able to speak to everyone that comes from many different backgrounds and not judging anyone from those backgrounds and being able to find common place and understanding. And we as a society, you know, um, I like to think that we is we have to kind of work on that, right? And so he can teach us how to stay in our humility, but also our empowerment, being in a position of power and using it usefully. How are you serving a community? How are you serving a people? How are you showing up in your life purpose? How are you standing in your power? Are you using it for self um, satisfying things that usually, you know, don't end up giving you much or are you serving, um, you know, and giving back and seeing the fruits of your labor. These are things to think about when Shango appears either in your energy or around you, whether he is somebody who is a force around you to protect you and also guide you, or if he's showing up to let you know, hey, you need to back up a little bit and rethink your plan, okay? Oya, who is the Empress and the Tarot deck. And I, I mentioned Emperor and Empress because they do represent those two in the Tarot deck. Um, Oya is the queen of changes. She is the queen of life storms. She is the queen of change. And when we think about those things, sometimes we can put a negative connotation around them where it's not necessary. Sometimes you need chaos and storm to come in to really show you what you are made of, to really show you what you what you are willing to say that you deserve and how you go about honoring that in your, you know, your physical and spiritual presence and the decisions that you make in your life. Uh, whether this is in your career or whether this is in your personal life, okay? So Oya presents herself as multifaceted. That's why she's in her power. And that's why when we talk about equal exchange of energy, Oya and Shango are one and one. Because it's not about one having to support the other. It's about both individuals knowing, both beings, divine beings knowing that they are both powerful, not because of, you know, what one does and what one other doesn't do, but rather what they do separately and what they do together and how they can create a powerful dynamic within that. Okay, so I wanted to share that message if you wanted to know what their energies were like. Um, colors that actually resonate with Shango, gold, red, okay, those are two colors that are his power colors. Um, Oya, when I asked what her power colors were, she she actually told me that she has a likeness for lavender, okay? Um, she's also someone who um, actually says that she's multifaceted. So if you were looking for a crown for her, um, that's something that she loves as an offering. Make sure that the jewels are multicolored, okay? Multifaceted, multicolored, because remember, we actually are able to really engage and um, we are able to know what's happening to us spiritually and within our spiritual body through the chakra system, right? So multifaceted, multicolored makes sense, right? Um, so that was something that she wanted me to share and she loves um she loves uh water she loves um salt she loves ocean so if you can get those scents even in like a potpourri dish a shell dish anything that is exquisite these are things that she loves okay 
And so when we talk about how a woman embodies her energy, somebody who is connected to their intuition, somebody who's connected to their power, somebody who is connected to their truth and their words, and they use them with grace and love. That is Oya's energy. She tells it to you how you need it, but she says it from a space of love, okay? And we have to remember to um, honor that within ourselves and also try to practice as much as we can, not because I'm telling you what to do, but because if you are trying to embody more of their energy and learn who they are, these are characteristics that you will see um, really open up and really start to shift your life as you, as you follow what that means for you, okay? All right, guys, bye.